Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking through the NBA slate on DraftKings for Monday, January the 2nd. Uh, we got a big Monday slate, guys. We got 10 games to go over, and as always in these videos, we're going to go uh, game by game. We're going to give kind of a quick breakdown of the slate, a quick game by game breakdown, what I do like taking a first look on Sunday night when I'm recording this video. Um, but as always, before we do get started with the breakdown, if you guys enjoy these DFS videos, if they do help you out, please hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet, and if you guys are new to the channel, check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. So, uh, Prize Picks is a player prop based DFS site. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about Prize Picks, but if you're not playing on there yet, get signed up, use promo code NOAH, and you will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Um, and like I said, Prize Picks is mainly you know focused on player props, so you know more or less. You're taking more or less on a player's projection. They have some projections already posted for Monday's games. You can take a look at these, see if there's any that stand out to you. Obviously, as we get closer to the start of the games on Monday night, you'll see a ton of props available for every game, for just about every starter. Um, and if there's anything that stands out to you, you just take more or less. You have to make at least two picks. You can make up to six picks, and you can win up to 25x your money on prize picks. You can also mix and match sports as well. So you can make multi-sport entries. You can mix, you know, NBA with NFL. We have a really good Monday night football game um, tonight between the, you know, the Bengals and the Bills. So if you want to take a look at some props in that game, you know, there's some props available for the NFL game um, on Monday night, which again, should be a good one. So yeah, guys, check out prize picks. If you're not playing over there yet, get signed up, use promo code NOAH. And again, you will get your first deposit matched up to $100. And as always, I should have a prize picks video posted for today. Uh, probably will go up sometime on Monday. Um, we'll see what the board looks like tonight, you know, Sunday night when I'm making this video. Right now, there's not much up, but if a lot of props get added and I can make the video the night before, I usually try and do that. But normally, I upload my prize picks videos the day of the games, usually kind of in the early afternoon. So check out the channel then. You should see a prize picks video posted talking through some plays that I like for today. But let's talk through this 10-game uh, Monday night slate. And we'll start off with the first game of the night, the Lakers and the Hornets. This one should be really good for, for DFS purposes. You've got two really fast-paced teams going up against each other, two teams that really don't play much defense either. LeBron James is coming in at 11,300. We'll start off with him and start off kind of with the Lakers side. So LeBron had a massive game on Friday night against the Hawks. I was at that game, and it was so fun to watch. I mean, LeBron just played so well on Friday night, um, had a big game, played 40 minutes, had 76 drafting points, nearly had a triple-double. Really good spot for him once again here. I know you know last time these teams played, he didn't have like the best game. He put up 51 DK points in 34 minutes, but it was a super high scoring game, 130 to 134. You know last time these teams played, and I think we could see another really high scoring game here. And obviously without Anthony Davis, we can expect a really big role for LeBron. So I'm interested in LeBron as a payup option. I'm not too interested in really any other Hornets or Lakers though. The one other guy that I will mention just because it is such a good matchup is Thomas Bryant. 5900 for Thomas Bryant is pretty cheap and. I mean, you know, this is a matchup we've targeted all seasons. You know, uh, centers against the Hornets has been a really favorable spot. You know, Bryant didn't do that great against Charlotte last time they played, but coming off a big game Friday night against Atlanta, I think the minutes were, will be there. He played 34 minutes in that game. He probably will get low 30s minutes once again here. Him and LeBron are the two guys that really stand out on the Lakers. I don't really like too much else on the Lakers, though. Not super interested in Westbrook. Not super interested in really anyone else on this team. It's it's really LeBron and, uh, and Bryant that stand out. And then on the Charlotte side... Lamelo at 10K, I do have some interest in for tournaments today. I don't think Lamelo would be someone that I'd be prioritizing in like cash games, but for GPPs, we know he has the upside to pay off this price tag, and especially in a really good matchup like this and a fast-paced game. These are the type of spots that Lamelo Ball usually thrives in. Um, these are the type of spots I like to you know target him in. So I think Lamelo's in a really good matchup here. I think the 10K price tag is you know, warranted. He's been playing really well lately. Been playing big minutes. I think he still has the upside to pay off this price tag. So. Interest in LaMelo on Charlotte. You know, looking at other Charlotte guys, though, Terry Rozier just not been playing that well lately. Kind of been in a little bit of a slump. Without Kelly Oubre, he should continue to pick up a little bit more usage. But, man, it's it's hard to feel great about Rozier right now. He did have a really good game against the Lakers last time they played. And I think it is a pretty good matchup for Rozier. But he's just kind of a contrarian play. Mason Plumlee feels priced about right. If I was going to play a center in this game, I think I'd go to DeBryant on the other side. P.J. Washington's minutes have been pretty strong. I think at 5,800, he feels priced about right, but it's playable. Uh, Gordon Hayward <coughs> plays big minutes every night. Just production hasn't really been that great. He just hasn't shown much upside this season, even in a really good matchup like this. I'm not super excited about Gordon Hayward either, so that'll probably do it for Charlotte. That's everything I like in this game. So let's so move on to the next one, Chicago and Cleveland. So looking at the Bulls here, I don't really like much on the Bulls today. 
DeRozan, Vooch, and Levine are usually the guys you're going to want to target on Chicago, and they all feel priced about right for this matchup. It's obviously not the best spot. Cleveland's a really good defensive team. They play at a slow pace. Probably just going to pass on the Bulls here. I just don't see much I really have much interest in on, on a 10-game slate. On the Cleveland side, though, there's a good amount to like on Cleveland. So Darius Garland is listed as doubtful for today, and Evan Mobley is questionable. Uh, both these guys, I think, were out on Saturday. Um, I didn't pay attention too much to NBA on Saturday just because I was kind of out and about, but I know Garland missed Saturday, so did Mobley. We saw De uh, Donovan Mitchell actually kind of struggle last game, 32 DK points in 37 minutes. I think he should bounce back here. It's the same matchup. These teams play uh, you know, on Saturday. They're playing again today. Same matchup, but I think Mitchell should, should bounce back here, and obviously without Garland, he should pick up some more usage. I'm kind of interested in Mitchell and 9K. Um, if Evan Mobley's out, I have a lot of interest in Jared Allen. Jared Allen also didn't have the best game, but his per permanent production should definitely spike without Mobley. And if Mobley were to sit again, I'd be interested in Allen. Um, and then, you know, value-wise, there's going to be some value to go to from Cleveland. So Karis LeVert had a really big game last game. He should be in line to pick up another start here without Don uh, or without uh, Darius Garland. We saw LeVert play 37 minutes, was really productive. You know, he's been good in the game that he's played without one of Mitchell or Garland. You know, whenever Mitchell and Garland are healthy and playing, it, you know, Levert's not really a guy that we look to target much in DFS, but he's had some really big, ga uh, big games whenever one of those guys have been out. And a lot of the games that Levert has started this season, he's been really good as a starter. So 4,800 is way too cheap for Karis Levert today, assuming, you know, no Garland. He's a really good value play. And then if Evan Mobley's out again, we can look to Kevin Love for value. He started last game, played 34 minutes, had you know, 37 DK points. Kevin Love's a good permanent producer, and 4700 is way too cheap if he starts again and plays, you know, low 30s minutes. So, lots of like on Cleveland here. Um, and even, you know, some dart throws off the bench. You could take a shot on, like, a guy like Jetty Osman uh, um, if Garland and, and Mobley are out. He would probably see some more minutes, and he's really cheap. So, lots of like on Cleveland today, for sure. Um, definitely favorite place here are, are Levert and Mitchell, but I think if, if uh, Mobley gets ruled out, I have a lot of interest in both Jared Allen and Kevin Love. Um, and even Jetty Osman, I think you could take a shot on, but... That'll do it for that game. Let's move on to the next one, Toronto and Indiana. So for Toronto today, you know, pretty good matchup here for the Raptors. Pacers play at a really fast pace. So I think this is a good spot for Pascal Siakam. He's been playing really well as of late, been playing massive minutes. Um, I think at 10,200, he's a viable GPP play. Wouldn't consider him a priority at this price tag, but he's a, a viable option if you're playing a lot of lineups. For, uh, Fred Van Vliet is uh, questionable for this game, so we'll have to monitor this. I think he's been out like the last two or three games. If Van Vliet remains out, obviously we can expect a bigger role for Siakam, Barnes, OG. Those guys would all look a little bit more appealing. I think the, you know, the rest of these Toronto guys like Barnes, OG, Trent, probably only going to consider these guys if Van Vliet is out. If Van Vliet plays, I don't have too much interest in these other Raptors, but they would still be okay options. Really, it's just kind of a wait and see, though, with Van Vliet's status. If Van Vliet's in, I don't love much from Toronto outside of maybe Siakam as a tournament play. The guys like Barnes, OG, Trent, only considering them, I think, if uh, Van Vliet sits. And then on the other side with Indiana, you know, tough spot here for the Pacers. I don't love to target the Raptors. They're a good defensive team. They play slow as well. So tough matchup for Halliburton, tough matchup for Miles Turner. I think Miles Turner at 6,400, just given the price tag, is still an okay option. You know, he's been playing pretty well lately, and in the games that have been competitive, we see Miles Turner be really good in those games. Um, a lot of the games where he's not been great, have either been due to like blowout or foul trouble, but like the last two games, I mean, 35 and 34 minutes, 48 and 48 drafting sports. It's been super, super productive lately. Um, if this game's close, we can expect, I would think, low 30s minutes from Miles Turner. So at 6,400, I would have some interest in him. I think he's the one guy on Indiana that I do kind of like, but that's pretty much it. Don't love much on the Pacers here. I think we can uh, move on to the next game. So uh, the Pelicans and the Sixers, we'll start off on the, on the Sixers side. Don't see too much I like on the Sixers today. You know, they're starting to get healthy again. They've got Tyrese Maxey back. So with Tyrese Maxey back, that takes away from guys like Harden, Tobias Harris, you know, De'Anthony Melton. Embiid can still have a big game even playing with Maxey, but I think at 11300 he is definitely priced kind of where he should be. He's not like a glaring option at this salary. These teams did play on Friday night, and, um, you know, Embiid had a solid game, 56 DK points in 34 minutes. But again, 11-3, we're, we're hoping to get like 60 plus, 70 from Embiid. And can he do that? He absolutely can. Just don't think it's a guy that I'm really going to you know, go out of my way to play at that price tag. Same goes with Harden at 10-1. I think Harden's priced correctly now, especially with Maxi back. And then the rest of the Sixers, I'm pretty much off of. I mean, I don't see much I like here. And on the other side with the Pelicans, don't love much on the Pelicans either. You know, Zion at 9,700, I think is the one guy I could get behind. Price tag feels about right. Don't love the matchup either. Sixers have been good defensively this year. They played a slow pace, but 
Zion is Zion. I mean, he can put up a huge game any night, and especially with Brandon Ingram still out, we know the you know, additional usage that Zion's going to pick up is enough to make him worth rostering at 9700 But CJ McCollum feels priced about right. I know he had a really big game recently, made like a shit ton of threes when these teams played. Like These, these teams played on Friday, and McCollum had 63 drafting points. Would say that was definitely an outlier. I mean, he shot 11 for 16 from three. That's not something that we can expect to happen again. The price tag feels correct. The matchup's not great. I'm probably not going to go to CJ McCollum today. Don't think I'm going to go to any other Pelicans either. So really, there's not much I like in this you know, in this game overall. We can go ahead and move on to the next one, the, the Spurs and the Nets. So starting off on the Brooklyn side, looking at the Nets here, really, really good matchup for Brooklyn. Obviously, you have to kind of worry about blowout here. Um, I'm pretty sure this game has a really big spread. Brooklyn's playing at home. San Antonio is a terrible team. But if Brooklyn, you know, if this game stays competitive and these Brooklyn guys play their full minutes, Plenty of upside here for both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Um, San Antonio, one of the worst defensive teams in the league. They play at a really fast pace. Durant was kind of disappointing on Saturday in a really good matchup against Charlotte, but I'd expect him to bounce back here in another you know, great matchup against the or against the uh, Spurs. Excuse me. So definitely have some mention Durant. I think Kyrie at 8,700 looks kind of appealing as well. Would not play these guys together, but I think playing one of the two Brooklyn stars makes some sense just because the matchup is so good. It feels like one of them probably has a good game. Um, maybe they both do, but I think most likely scenarios that like one of them outperforms their salary. Whichever one you prefer, go with if you want. Um, if I had to choose between the two, I think I'd slightly prefer Kevin Durant. Um, just given the you know $1,700 in difference, I don't think that's enough to make me want to drop down to Kyrie. But I think both you know Brooklyn guys are in play. I think it's a really good matchup for Nicholas Claxton as well. Claxton's not a guy that I've played much lately, but his minutes have been pretty strong. He had a really good game against Charlotte and a really good matchup. Gets another good matchup today. I'm fine going to Claxton. I think at 6,300, he is a playable option. I'm not really interested in many other Brooklyn guys, though, outside of you know the top three guys there. Um, don't see much else I like on this team. And then on the other side with San Antonio, probably just going to pass on San Antonio today. You know, Devin Vassell's questionable, so this will be something to monitor. If Devin Vassell does get ruled out, obviously that benefits Kelvin Johnson a little bit, benefits Trey Jones a little bit. But I wouldn't be like running to roster these guys. I think they're kind of priced where they should be. Plus, given the blowout risk, I really don't want to like heavily invest in this game just because it does have a chance to blow out. So probably going to pass on San Antonio for the most part. Maybe Jakob Pertl at 5,800. I could get behind. His minutes have been trending up lately. And you know, 5,800 is definitely cheap for Pertl if we expect him to play like 30, 32 minutes. So if he does get the minutes, I think the price tag is definitely a little bit too low. Maybe you could go there, but again, like I just really don't want to be rostering a ton of San Antonio guys today. It's just a scary spot going up against a good Brooklyn team that's been playing well and you know in a game that could be a blowout. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one though, Denver and Minnesota. So uh, for Minnesota today, no uh, Carl Anthony Towns still, so obviously that you know we expected that. But I know Rudy Gobert's kind of been banged up lately, but it looks like he's good to go, not on the injury report. You know, look at this Minnesota team. I don't I don't like much here. Anthony Edwards is ninety five hundred. That feels like an appropriate price tag. D'Angelo Russell is 7,400. It's a good matchup for him. I know the, the Nuggets have given up a lot of fancy points to point guards this season, but Russell at this price tag on a 10-game slate wouldn't be run into roster. Gobert's just been terrible lately. His permanent production's been really bad. Minutes have also kind of been trending down for Gobert. You would think in this matchup against Jokic, they're going to need Gobert's size out there. And the price tag is like really cheap. I mean, 6,900 is really cheap for Gobert, but God, this dude is just like, he's such a frustrating player to roster in DFS just because you never know when he's going to have a good game. Like, he can have these games like this where he gets, you know, eight points, seven rebounds, plays 28 minutes, and then he can have those random games where he gets, like, 20 and 20 and blocks six shots. You just don't really know with Gobert. Um, I think the price tag coming down at least makes him a playable option, and I definitely think in this matchup they, they probably want him out there against Jokic. So he's playable. He's probably the one guy that I like on Minnesota. I don't like too much on this Minnesota team outside of Gobert. And then on the other side with Denver, so... Nikola Jokic at 11-7. Look, matchup against Gobert might not be ideal, but I like I really don't get scared too much about a you know matchup for a guy like Jokic. Jokic is a matchup proof player. He can destroy any matchup. I think at 11-7, Jokic is totally fine paying up for it today. It's just it's gonna come down to like what value we get. If we have any value on the slate, if there's a lot of value, I have no issue going to Jokic. But is Jokic gonna be someone that I prioritize getting in? I don't think so, you know, unless you know value opens up. But he's probably the one guy that I do like on Denver. Uh, now, Jamal Murray did not play in Sunday's game, but I guess that just was because it's a back-to-back. -back. I assume Jamal Murray will be back today. So if Jamal Murray is back, you know, pretty much out of, you know, guys like guys like Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., not super interested in. Obviously, Bruce Brown and Bones Holland benefited without Murray, but if Murray's back today, don't have much interest in those guys either. So it's really just Jokic that I like on Denver, and I think that's it. So 
Let's move on to the next game, guys. Uh, Dallas and Houston. Feels like these teams have played literally like seven times this season. I know they played recently, but man, it feels like these teams play like every other week. Um, Luka has destroyed in this matchup. Uh, these teams have already played, what, twice this season? Luka's averaged 81 DraftKings points against Houston. He had 81 against them on, you know, on Thursday, and then they played again on the 23rd of December. He had 82. So he's literally put up 82 and 81 DraftKings points against Houston this season. I wouldn't be surprised if Luka puts up 80 again today. Like The matchup's so good. Houston can't guard anyone. They can't guard scoring guards, and that's obviously what Luka is. Um, and Luka's just been on another level lately. I mean, you look at his freaking game log, man. 82, 60, or 82, 60, 110, 81, 85. He's got 80-plus DraftKings points in four out of his last five games. Look, I have nothing negative to say about Luka. The price tag's really high. It's tough to pay that price tag for him right now with not much value on the slate, but... If value does open up, again, I think Luka's a really strong play. Christian Wood at 8K. Wish he was a little bit cheaper, but his minutes have been strong lately. He's been playing well. Production's been good, too. Matchup, I think, against Houston's really good. He crushed in this matchup last time they played. He just he got limited minutes because of foul trouble and because of blowout. But if he's not in foul trouble, if it's not a blowout, I think Wood does play like 33, 34 minutes. So at 8K in 34 minutes from Christian Wood in this matchup, he can definitely outperform that salary. But that's pretty much it from Dallas. I think that's you know everything I like here. And then on the Houston side, I really don't like much on Houston, but we do need to monitor the status of Alperin Shingun. I think Shingun was out in their last game, and we did see Bruno Fernando draw the start. I'm not exactly sure what Bruno Fernando did. Um, let's see. He played he played 21 minutes, had 10 DraftKings points. So like even if Bruno Fernando starts again, I don't think I'd be like running to roster him. Um, Garuba, let's see how many minutes he played. Like he played he played 19 or 20. And then I guess they played, like, maybe Boban got some minutes and blowout. Yeah, so he did. So they basically ran, like, a three-man rotation at center. Not a, a situation I really want to attack, but I think if I had to play anyone on Houston, if Shingun is out, I don't mind going to Bruno Fernando for 3100 as a value play. But I'm not super interested in many Houston guys today. The price tags feel all correct here. Um, there's just not much that stands out on this Rockets team. So let's move on to the next game, Atlanta and Golden State. So for Golden State today, still no Steph, still no Wiggins. You know, we can expect a, a really big role for Jordan Poole, for Klay Thompson. Those guys, at their price tags, I think are both playable options. Poole should continue to get really big usage, should continue to play big minutes. In good matchups, he can usually do really well. This is, I would say, not the best matchup. He's probably going to get guarded by DeJounte Murray, who's a good defender, but I still think Poole at 8,200 is a viable tournament play. I think Klay Thompson at 7,100, a viable tournament play as well. clay has been playing really well lately, been getting really big minutes. She continue to play big minutes. She continue to be one of the number one options on offense. And the price tag at 7,100 really isn't moving. So I think, you know, Clay still looks solid. The rest of Golden State, though, like Draymond, DiVincenzo, these guys feel priced about right. Not super interested in either one at their salaries, but, you know, Draymond and DiVincenzo should both start, play 33, 34 minutes. They are fine options. Don't love the price tags on either. Wish they were a little bit cheaper, but I think they are playable. And that's pretty much it for Golden State. Don't really like anything else here. And then on the other side with Atlanta, so Trey and DeJounte, 9,900 for Trey, 8,500 for DeJounte. These price tags, they feel about right, but I think this is a pretty good spot against Golden State. Golden State does play at a really fast pace. I think that this should be a fast-paced game in general. should be a really high-scoring game. So if you want to go to one of the Atlanta guards, I don't mind either one. Um, if I had to pick one, I think I'd prefer Trey, but I think both are playable here. Um, without Clint Capella, we should continue to see more minutes for John Collins, more minutes for Onyeko Kongwu. Both those guys at their price tags, I think, are playable options. Collins is 5,800, got into some mouse, uh, massive foul trouble against the Lakers last game, but you know, barring foul trouble or blowout, he should play 33, 34 minutes, and his permanent production without Clint Capella has definitely been better um, just kind of throughout his career. So I think Collins is fine. I think Okongwu is solid at 5,600. He should play really big minutes here. He got 43 minutes in regulation last game. I know, obviously, you know, without or with, uh, with Collins getting in foul trouble, that kind of, you know, helped that. But we're definitely going to get big minutes from Okongwu as long as he's not in foul trouble and the game's competitive. So 5,600 for Okongwu, I think he looks appealing. Um, that probably does it for Atlanta. I don't see too much else on Atlanta I like today. So next game, Detroit and Portland. Another game that, you know, you have to worry about blowout here. But for Portland, really good matchup. Detroit, kind of like San Antonio, been one of the worst defensive teams in the league. So Really, really good spot for Damian Lillard. Um, 9,800, he definitely has the upside to pay off this price tag. I do worry about blowout here, but if this game can stay close and Dame plays his full minutes, I mean, he should just destroy Detroit. Like, Detroit is going to have no answer for Lillard. Um, they don't have any good defenders. Their defense overall is terrible. Really like Dame. Probably my favorite play on Portland, but we do need to monitor the status of Yusuf Nurkic. He's listed as questionable. He did not play in their last game. We did see Drew Eubanks draw the start. Eubanks actually played over 30 minutes. 
wasn't like super productive, only had 22 DK points, but good matchup here against Detroit. If Eubanks um, were to start again, I think at 3,500, he would be a really good value play, would be a guy that I'd have a lot of interest in if, uh, if Nurkic is out. But guys like Jeremy Grant, Simons, Josh Hart, not super interested in at their price tags. It is a revenge game for Jeremy Grant if you want to factor that in, but I'm not super interested in anyone else on Portland. Now on the Detroit side, I don't really like much on Detroit either. Bojan, his price tag feels priced correctly. Same with Jaden Ivey. Um, Killian Hayes is out still for suspension, so we should see more minutes for Alec Burks. I think Alec Burks is probably the one guy that I would go to uh, from Detroit. He's been getting good minutes regardless, and now without Killian Hayes, you kind of expect him to play more. He played 28 minutes last game. Feels pretty likely that he plays you know, mid to high 20s once again. He's only 4,700. That is pretty cheap for Alec Burks. He is a good permitted producer. If I had to play anyone on the Pistons, I think Alec Burks would be my favorite play from Detroit. But I don't really like too much on this team. There's not a ton I love. And honestly, on a 10-game slate, even though they're missing Killian Hayes, I really just I don't want to roster many Pistons here. I'm just not a team I really ever get excited to, to target guys from. So that'll do it for that game. Let's talk about the last game of the night, the Heat and the Clippers. So for the Heat today, I think Jimmy Butler is listed as probable. He is, so he's expected to play. You know, with Miami fully healthy here, don't see much I like on Miami. Obviously, you know, the price tags on these guys feel correct. Butler's 9,400. Hero's 9,100. Bam is 8,900. Lowry is 6,500. I mean, at those price tags, like, no, nobody looks that appealing. I mean, sure, if you're playing a ton of lineups, feel free to mix these guys in. If you're playing the late slate, feel free to play some of these guys on the late slate. For the 10-game main slate, I'm not really interested in many, th many guys on Miami at all. And then on the Clippers side... I mean, Paul George and Kawhi, if I had to play anyone in the Clippers, they would be the two guys I would look to. But at their price tags, they both feel priced correctly. Paul George's permanent production has been really good lately, but he's 8,600 now and playing with Kawhi. That feels like a price tag that's correct. Same with Kawhi. His minutes have gotten back up to normal. He's playing pretty much normal minutes now, 34, 35, 36 minutes. 8,100, I think, is where he should be priced. But if you want to go to Kawhi, I don't hate it. I think he's playable. Pretty much off the, uh, the other Clippers, though. I don't see anything else on the Clippers I like today. So... That'll do it, guys, for this 10-game Monday slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I do appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit that like button down below. If you have not yet, hit that subscribe button as well. Also, check out Prize Picks, sponsor of this video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks. Use my promo code, promo code NOAH. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up for Prize Picks. Make sure to check them out. Use that promo code uh, when you do sign up. But appreciate you guys watching the video. Best of luck on this 10-game slate. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.